Hello and welcome to the first transfer show in a huge summer for Newcastle United. This is the True Faith YouTube channel. My name is Emil Franchi. I'm joined today by Adam Widrington and we are here to tell you the latest headlines about Newcastle United in this very, very exciting window where the, the new owners are going to bolster Newcastle United, the survived Newcastle United, the redeemed Newcastle United, the, the oh, Adam, I, I can't think of any more words to describe this team. Can you help us out? Honestly, this is this is going to be an absolutely seismic time That's a good for one. Newcastle United. Um, the, the, the potential of this transfer window, like, is... It, is palpable. Like you, you can feel the buzz. I mean, I remember when we got taken over, could you really look forward to the summer without knowing we were safe? And then as soon as you're safe, this is the moment that we were all waiting for. And in January, it was always a bit tentative. It was just this caveat of, but we're in a relegation battle, but new season, Emil, clean slate, like the, the transfer targets galore and some absolutely ridiculous ones already. And we haven't even had the Champions League final yet. So it's it, it's already kicking off and I cannot wait. Yeah, Champions League final. So Newcastle can just basically pick who they want from that. That's how it works. A bit like the American football draft, isn't it? It's like whoever does <laughs> well for whoever scores the win and Newcastle get, that, that that's the rules, right? Um, uh, sadly not. No, we, have, we haven't got a wish list like that, do we, Adam? Um, we have to look close at the home. Uh, first of all, um, and, and just a reminder that, as I say, we've recorded a podcast for Patreon. There's going to be a, a much chunkier version of what we tell you about here on our Patreon, uh, details of which will be in the bio. But uh, let us know your thoughts on in any of these players. We start off with uh, Matty Target. Um, wow, I mean, glamorous straight away there, isn't it, Adam? Talking about Matty Target uh, immediately. But he is a player that saved Newcastle, you know, uh, no doubt about it. 16 starts. He played every minute of his, his games. He must be absolutely shattered. But then his other half nearly blows the whole thing away, doesn't she? Honestly, I mean, we are in the age of, uh, you know, people reading into social media posts and we're chatting about Sven Botman liking stuff in January, all this kind of stuff. This is... This is where we're going to get lots of stories from. And his partner did suggest that this that the journey at Newcastle was over or whatever language is used there. That was swiftly edited, as, as you mentioned. Uh, but look, Target, really, really solid, dependable player. 15 million, you're thinking, that's a, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? You know, he would... He's loved by the fans. Uh, Bruno loves him, and sh surely we we need to be listening to Bruno Gimaraes for you know for all transfer <laughs> targets. Yeah, he's got he's got to, he's got you got to listen to Bruno, really, don't you? Because I mean, his, his dad's got a taxi, and um, if if Matt Target wants to get anywhere, his dad his dad was over recently. Uh, then he should be ferrying, ferrying him about. I, I imagine that that Target uh, will will be getting free taxis until he signs. Now, you know, Bruno's dad will just be like. I'll stick you in the back of the cab for free. Where do you want to go? Newcastle? Right, we're driving there now. The doors lock and, and he can't get out because Bruno wants to play in the back garden with Matt Target. It's like next level uh, to Sean and the Bridges. It's like, right, we'll give you the tour of the Bridges and <laughs> drive over all seven of them. <laughs> I do feel a bit sorry for his other half, though, because, like I say, it got edited out. You know, she's just sat there in Jesmond in a cafe and uh, suddenly uh, two men in suits and sunglasses turn up outside and say, delete, delete that now. Say, Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And uh, Jason Tyndall's just in the back of the car. The window goes down. You can just see his eyes. And he's like, you get rid of that right now. You don't give that away. <laughs> But, but do you think my targets looked at that and seen what she's and just gone? Oh, for fuck! <laughs> Why have <laughs> yeah. you done that? Like, absolutely, don't know what's going to happen. Like, don't Stop. ruin it. Like, right, quick, quick! They'll, they'll be getting rid of me in a second. It was all happening. Eddie Howe was Eddie Howe was taking me out for drinks. Now it's gone. Look what you've done. Uh, Fulham are interested though, uh, which which is nice for for Target. Uh, I think he played there briefly. I don't know if I remember him in a Fulham shirt, but probably happened. Uh, shut it from my memory. Uh, he's a Newcastle player in my eyes. But, um, you know, newly promoted team looking for a player. Whatever happens with Target, fair play to him because he certainly played his way into another Premier League team, regardless of what happens. And I imagine Steven Gerrard's got a few questions to ask about him, right? Well, <laughs> what in the fact that he misjudged his ability and brought in... Dina yeah. instead and hope Gerard, you idiot, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, I think, you know, Matt Target is a really solid player. He's, he's kind of like a sort of seven out of ten player, really, isn't he? He never really lets you down. 
Mm. He's got great delivery from set piece. I really like this idea that we've got like two fullbacks that were just really good at set pieces. Because if you've got two fullbacks that are good at set pieces, then that allows more attacking players who might be better at scoring to get themselves in front of goal rather than uh, uh, taking taking set pieces out out, on the, out out wide. But you know, we are obviously linked with with Ren and Lodi, who in, mm. who who is a different proposition of a left back, maybe a different level of left back, and it, and it makes you think. Obviously, I you know I, I love Targ, I love what he's done, and I. I really love how humble he is and just how hard working he is, how, how well he's fitted in to an Eddie Howe side. Um, slotted in seamlessly, as you say, he's, he helped survivors. But if we if we have the ambition that we that we think we need for next season to push on into the top half, you know, are we is Matt Target the player to do that? He could be, but yeah. obviously the the, the, the Lottie rumors are really um hotting up and he seems a really exciting player. Well really Lottie was Lottie was the player that Jack said was probably the most likely. Uh, uh, to talk about this, Jack, of course, our our reporter on the podcast, and this is the name that that is uh, spicing up the news reports at the moment. Everyone wants a bit of this story, and everyone's going to be fighting to be the first one to break it. I know that Lodi's camp have actually said, uh, Chronicle reporting that uh, they were interested in the Great Newcastle project, but Lodi's actually, um, I think, he's a little bit little bit younger than Target, two years, which doesn't really make that much difference in terms of ability, but. Um, this is a player that's played with Kieran Trippier. He's at Atletico Madrid, high intense environment, Champions League football, win La Liga, um, and a Brazilian player as well. You know, it, it does look as though Newcastle are going to have a Brazilian team very soon, Adam. I, I don't know if you want to maybe make a late suggestion, but this third kit that we've seen, blue and yellow, that that's pretty much the Brazil colours that they're looking for the away kit. And, and we're going to have uh, the Brazil of the North, aren't we? And yet everyone's decided to pick up on the white shirt, eh? Um, <laughs> we're doing it really discreetly. We're turning into Brazil and we're going to just come out next season and no one realised because we fooled you with the green and white shirt. That's well, pretty much what's well, happened. Well, well Lodi and, and and Gimarais have played together before. So again, there's this yeah. sort of history there. You should suggest that there's kind of instant chemistry and potential for integration. You you could say the same about uh, Lucas Paqueta, who I'm sure we'll be talking about over summer at some point as well. But, you know, going back to... Get them all. Going back we'll to buy Lottie, them all. Any Brazilian, you're coming. You're coming to Newcastle. No, no matter what you say. The, the, but the idea of a really, really attacking gung-ho left-back like yeah. Renan Lodi playing on the same flank as Alan San Maximan, like... <laughs> <laughs> that that's gonna be that's gonna be wild, surely. Oh man, I can't wait. I can't. You know what? He looks really good. And yeah, okay, Newcastle fans, do what you like. Well, while you're on YouTube here, quickly flick off and, and go and have a look at his highlights clips. I know it's easy to fall into these rabbit holes, but I couldn't help but get excited about the idea of Newcastle having a really progressive fullback who. Much like Trippier, likes to get up the pitch. I mean, he's a, he's a different player to Trippier, but he's got a hell of a left foot on him. Um, he's he's got a good head on him. Um, I'm, I'm just very excited. And and the fact that Jack was speaking so positively about Lodi, um, and the fact that he may well be this big marquee signing. You know, Villa are signing players already. Newcastle won't be too far behind them. If that's the first one, I, I'll be very happy. But there there is other areas as well, Adam, which which Newcastle are. Are going to be looking at, and, and that is the strike position. Uh, the, the last name that is coming out once again, he was there in January. Um, feels like he's just like hidden in a box in Newcastle, and then he's like started like dropping things into bins. Saying Hugo Ekitike is definitely coming to Newcastle, by the way. This time I won't let you down, uh, but in French, um, he he might be on his way. This this young 19 year old, what, what, do you, what do you make of him? Have you are, you are you still keen after January, or, or are you thinking maybe we can go a bit better now? I, you know, there are some tri striking targets that, you know, I'm, I really like uh, Alexander Isak, for example, from Sociedad. You know, he, he really tore it up in the Euros for Sweden. Like TK is a similar kind of forward who is capable of playing wide as well as through the middle. And you think if we've got two very, very central strikers in Wilson and Wood at the minute, we don't know what's happening with Wood. Someone like Egeti, you know, I, I want to see Wonder Kids, Emil. You know, what's the point in having Rich Jones if we kind of get like the cream of teenage talent from the continent? Like, this is literally why I'm here. This is literally what I'm in for. Get, let's get Egeti, the best palindromic striker since Salas. <laughs> Who, Salas, who's that? Sorry, I'm not sure. Marcelo my... Salas from Chile. Uh, he scored oh. a fantastic goal against England, uh, Wembley, scored, uh, played for Lazio. Um, and scored a few in the World Cup as well. Also, Hassan Sass of World Cup fame for the Turkish striker. Can we sign these two as well, or is it too late? Well, it depends if we want to go for a whole 11 of 
a palindrome, a palindromic players or palindromic just... Brazilians, palindromic Brazilians, and it's it sounds like a Sam Fender song, but <laughs> that's what we're going to go for. Palin, palindromic Brazilians at Newcastle United. Uh, Ekitike, nineteen, he scored ten, he's got two red cards. He sounds like a right hothead. Uh, and quite frankly, I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be good, isn't it, Adam? I mean, uh, you've summed it up for me at the start with that word seismic. Um, and this, this journey is going to be wild, isn't it? And I mean, out, out of the three there, Adam, I, I guess Lodi's the one that we want, don't we? Yeah, he's, he seems really, really exciting. I think he could take us on to the next level. He's got loads of Champions League experience. He's he's won La Liga with Trippier. Like he's, his mates will have that kind of balance down either flank. Yeah, man, let's get him in. Let's let's get them all in, Emil, is what I really want to say. I don't want to have to pick and choose just because you make me on YouTube. Yeah, and if we can get Loddy to, oh no, it wouldn't work. I'm trying to do a palindrome. Let's let's leave it there. We're getting <laughs> we're getting too ahead of ourselves. Um, we are on Patreon. Uh, we've done a much chunkier version of this. This is just a very quick run through the headlines at Newcastle United in the transfer window, and hopefully that has just whet your appetite. So if you want more, join us on there. But we will be back each week with a short roundup of everything that is going on. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and if you've got any other thoughts on transfers that Newcastle should be signing or any disagreements about the players that we've talked about, you know what to do. Get in the comments. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.